Welcome to the Roth Show. As you can tell from my glasses, summer's here, and you need something to keep you cool, baby. And I'm not talking about ice cream. I'm talking about California. When summer arrives, doesn't matter what country you're in. It doesn't matter what TV show you're watching. It doesn't matter what dialect, of what language, of what vernacular, of what mountain tribe you belong to. You know exactly what I mean when I say California style. You want the glasses like this. You want the string, okay? You know exactly what kind of car we would use if we're talking about California style. If I say surf music, Everybody knows exactly what I mean. You might not be able to say Dick Dale and the Deltones, especially if you're from Japan. A little bit of insensitive humor there. <laughs> and if you've been having three shots of tequila, I'm going to take another shot at another continent. Shot at a con. Hey, use a pun, go to jail. But later, okay, try say Dick Dale and the Deltones after a double of Patron, okay, and roll your R's. Everybody knows surf music when you hear it. I can tell you endlessly what reverb is, but you won't know if you don't know until I play it for you and you go, oh yeah. And arguably, more people want to go to the beach than go to the Beatles. I've read a book that talks about you're either a Beatles or a Stones man, but that is kind of in the middle of the evolutionary cycle of being, all right? If you really look at it early in life, you are either a Beatles person or you are a Beach Boys person. This was at inception, and yes, I'm that old. <laughs> and you had to decide, because the Beach Boys, that was closer to Niedermeyer and the guys in that fraternity in Animal House. Remember Niedermeyer on the white horse? And those were the socius. That's what we called them up at Muir High School, which was 95% black, Spanish-speaking, me and Cindy Yamazaki, who was always great at math. I say that as sensitively as possible because I fucked up. I should have married Cindy Yamazaki, so to speak. 2020 hindsight. You were either a soch or you were a, quote, rocker. And if you were a Beach Boys person, then you were more clean cut. You had collared shirts. You might have collared shirts that had long sleeves. You might play tennis. You might be part of a country club and you would go out back and learn to smoke your Marlboro cigarettes at the country club functions that your parents might throw, something like uh, the Flamingo Kid or something like that in the background. Country clubs were really big all over over the United States in the early 60s, 50s. They were a symbol of having to make it, having made it rather, and in the middle class had started to make it. There were a lot of jobs, a lot of places to get jobs, and you would celebrate your position, your presence and your power at a country club. The opposite of that would have been the beach guys. And I was going to say the beach bums, and I'm going to reflect on Herb Cain, who was the columnist, oddly enough, or ironically enough, at the San Francisco Chronicle, which at the time was experiencing the transition from the beats, and that's what they were called, not beat nicks. Herb Cain attached the nick, like Sputnik, meaning you guys are subversive. You're anti-American. In fact, you're Russian, pinko, commie, divisive, whatever. And you became a beat Nick. Also, a little farther down the coast, you were surf Nicks. Beats, poets, all those fellas who were coming out of that transitional era, the Kerouac, Ginsburg, Burroughs, you know, uh, was turning into surf culture. Surf culture was a collection of all of that cerebral that had come before, but now you've got salt water. Salt water speaks its own language and perhaps is even more transcendental because it doesn't come with a certain haircut, doesn't come with a certain hat, pair of shoes. It doesn't have a religious bias. It doesn't come with a specific music, although some of the tribes who live by the salt water have very specific music. Dick Dale and the Deltones and Surfari, the first drum beat that any of us ever learned, and we got kicked out of very many elementary schools for playing it on the table of the uh, desk was. Now I'm a professional, don't try this at home. But that's a uh, wipeout. And you go, <laughs> and you would laugh hysterically and scream, wipeout, and fall off of your bicycle. 
The bicycles were designed to emulate the choppers and the motorcycles and the bike gangs and the folks who would drive up and down the Strip and Pacific Coast Highway and all the Southern California beaches. The Stingray, the Schwinn Stingray, I think 1968, maybe 70. And yeah, I could go back and research everything and pretend that I got everything perfect. But I'm going to try a Dr. Drew approach. It's more entertaining, I think, if nothing else, that I might have gotten things off by a few years and then labored under that specific illusion for how many decades. And then why am I here? Why is this? Why this? Etc. starts to make some more psychoanalytic sense if there's any to be had at all with the sw- with wow try and say schwinn stingray three times in a row if you're from pacoima the schwinn stingray belongs in the smithsonian and i'm going to guess that it already is the banana seat the sissy bar the slick tail on the back which was the tire okay All of this added up to ape hanger handlebars, which we still see out on the street today. How do you drive like this? And I, of all people, understand the wind in your pits. And then you get to the point where it's the wind in your beer can. And then you pay a price for that. And you go back to bicycles. (laughs) Today, the Schwinn Stingray is a thing of beauty in terms of Lowrider SE. You've got to see what they did with that shit in East LA Lowe's. <laughs> really, the kids are artists, artistas, a really amazing things. Or maybe it's their dads who are showing them how to use an acetylene torch and chrome and engraving. Look up lowrider bicycles because almost unanimously they're based on the Schwinn Stingray with the banana seat. And the banana seat now is as carefully engraved and has a tattoo every bit as expensive as mine, all right? It looks like a combination of saddlery and upholstery and making the scene with a gangster lean diamond in the back. Have you ever wondered what they mean? They mean diamond tuck. Instead of tuck and roll, which is straight lines like this, It's diamonds that are tucked into the upholstery. And you can get that on a Schwinn Stingray, but not on what you're trying to pay me, S.E. California culture is more internacional than it ever was before. What could be more California than the lowrider culture? And when you talk about lowrider culture, you're not just talking about the cars anymore. Yeah, the lowered Impala is a thing of beauty forever. Vida, okay? But when you have a car show today, you're also... Boy, that stuff still smells great. And there's about 14 trucks, and they all have different variations of, hey, drop that chalupa and come out with your hands up. You're liable to hear that over at the Port of Sands, huh? Or not. When you go to a lowrider car show these days, it includes food courts, it includes a dog show that is unique in and of itself. It's not AKC because over the years, the country club culture has learned that, whoa, pit bulls, uh, bull terriers, rottweilers, they're called hood hounds. That's vernacular, at least on the East Coast. I say it with respect. I've always wanted a pit bull or a pit bull terrier just because they came with a sense of humor to me. A great magazine, Atomic Dog, look that one up, Atomic Dog dedicated to hood hounds, a lot of bulls, bulldogs, uh, pit bulls, bull terriers, and even more fascinating are the folks and the families because it's all families. Yeah, you're gonna think a gang sign and whatever, and that certainly goes with it, okay? The boys in the hood and Compton, certainly that's part of the culture and it's part of what makes all of popular music, frankly, the entire left hand side of the Billboard chart entertaining these days. I taste hood in fucking everything. The entire world celebrating California summertime beach culture, saltwater mine. Everything about surfing kind of started here. Yeah, I know the genesis was actually Hawaii. Yes, it's South Pacific, but inarguably the single most important surf spot in the history of the entire art form and the sport. And if you know the entire history inside and out, you'd had to have been growing up inside and out of it myself, you would know. 
It's not San Onofre and Sunset. It is not Waimea. It is not Hanalei. It's not Jaws. It's on the corner of 8th and Pico in Santa Monica, California. And it's the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium where we're going to go watch surf movies tonight. If we can't get in that night to watch that flick and it's going to be on one of those projectors where it has the mouse ears and there's a balcony. And this is the same place that years later you're going to go see Rush and Van Halen and Santana and all manner of rock bands, all right? But surf movies, who the fuck has time to go out in the water and really learn that stuff when you're trying to fight your way through junior high school, especially integrated junior high school? I got to learn everything on Soul Train by this fucking Saturday, man. It's the... Here's where you go into the thinker part. Jesus Christ, that's just the African-American part of my current heritage. What about my girlfriend whose dad only speaks Spanish when he drinks and he's a blast to drink with? but I don't fucking understand. So now I got to learn Spanish. When am I going to get in the water? I don't live anywhere near the salt water, even though I'm Southern California. So I'm respondent to the climate. I'm respondent to the colors and the light and tiki culture, which is absolutely part of beach culture and summertime and so forth. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm not getting up at dawn. I'm not going in the water. In a few more years, there's going to be a movie about sharks. Just fucking believe me. And then there's going to be a whole week about sharks on something called Discovery.